The Netherlands employed hundreds of domestically produced aircraft during World War II as they fought against the Germans in Europe and the Japanese in Asia. Contemporary Dutch combat aircraft of this time period included many modern engineering feats, and even though Dutch pilots were outnumbered, they still put up a valiant effort in the skies. For their efforts, the Dutch inflicted moderate damage on their foes, especially in their use of more modern 1930s aircraft. Production of military aircraft was increased in the 1930s due to the increasing prospect of war in Europe. Germany was the largest concern to the Netherlands, which reintroduced conscription in 1934 and remilitarized the Rhineland in early 1936. The Fokker D-21 was compact, agile, and easy to produce, making it fit nicely with Dutch aviation production capabilities. It was designed by Anthony Fokker in 1935 and first flew in March 1936. It was a revolutionary design for the Dutch Air Force because the pre-existing Dutch fighter aircraft were typically biplanes that hailed from the 1920s and early 1930s. The Fokker D-21 was originally intended to be used in the Dutch East Indies, but German aggression in the years prior to World War II caused the government and military to put it into service in the European branch of the Air Force. Similarly to other Dutch designs, the fuselage was made of metal and the wings were made out of wood. One potential drawback the Fokker D-21 had was the fixed landing gear. On one hand, the immovable landing gear created drag, decreasing speed and maneuverability. On the other hand, it made the design simpler to produce. Also, the lightweight design of the wooden wings made up for the reduced maneuverability caused by the drag. The plane had four 7.92mm Browning machine guns, two in the engine cowling and one on either wing. This armament was quite usual for the mid-1930s, but by the German invasion of the Netherlands in 1940, it failed to compete with heavy 20mm cannons found on German BF-109Es. Next, it used a nine-cylinder air-cooled British Bristol Mercury engine of 830 horsepower with a three-bladed propeller. This propelled the plane to a maximum speed of 286 miles per hour. Proposed variants had upgraded engines, but these models could not be produced before the German invasion. Fokker D-21s first saw service with the Finnish Air Force during the Winter War in 1939 against the Soviet Union, and they performed well in the first months of the war. Eventually, more advanced Soviet fighters gained an edge over the D-21. Finland used the D-21 throughout the continuation war against the Soviet Union until 1944. Finland also purchased seven from the Netherlands and produced 90 more under license production before and during the war. The Finns modified the plane for their own production. In the Finnish variant, there were two machine guns on each wing and none in the engine cowling. Another interesting Finnish modification was the installation of skis for landing gear instead of traditional wheels on some of the aircraft. This was more effective in the snowy environment of Finland. Also, Finland used the Bristol Mercury, Bristol Pegasus, and Pratt and & Whitney Wasp Jr. engines in their D-21s. Finally, before seeing combat in the Netherlands, 22 D-21 saw service in the Danish Air Force, but all were destroyed or damaged during the German invasion in April of 1940. Across all nations, 200 D-21s were produced. By the time Germany invaded the Netherlands in May 1940, the Dutch had 36 D-21s. Dutch pilots fought fiercely against German BF-109s, and D-21s are credited with downing 37 German unarmed Ju-52 transport planes. The downing of these transport aircraft slightly disrupted German logistics and paratrooper operations. Dutch pilots also downed a handful of enemy BF-109 fighters. Following the Dutch surrender, an unknown number of D-21s were captured and used by Germany, mostly for training purposes. The D-21 was certainly a capable fighter aircraft for its day, and although it saw most of its service with Finland against the Soviets during World War II, it also proved to be a formidable foe for the Germans. The Fokker T5 was designed in 1936 with a multi-purpose design in mind. 
It was designed with the ability to intercept bombers and bomb enemy ground targets. The prototype first flew in 1938 and production lasted from 1938 to 1940. The T-5 had a crew of five, one pilot, one co-pilot who also served as a gunner, a navigator who also served as a gunner, and two dedicated gunners. It was powered by two air-cooled Bristol Pegasus engines of 926 horsepower each. These engines turned out to be unreliable when used on the T-5 because they were inefficient and required large quantities of oil to run. Still, when the engines were in working order, the plane could reach a top speed of 260 miles per hour and had a cruising speed of 205 miles per hour. It was very similar in role and performance to the British Bristol Blenheim light bomber and the German Dornier DO-17 light bomber. It was equipped with a Solothurn 20mm cannon at the nose of the plane. It was unconventional for a bomber to have a 20mm cannon on the front of it, but due to limited industrial capacity, the Dutch developed this hybrid of a medium bomber and interceptor that could both bomb the enemy and attack enemy planes rather than make separate planes that had more specialized roles. As the Dutch put it, the plane functioned as an aerial cruiser. Additionally, during the interwar period, military theorists postulated that strategic bombing of cities would be the key to victory, so making a dedicated interceptor rather than a hybrid bomber was out of the question for the Dutch. The plane turned out to be rather awkward, namely because the cannon was capable of easily taking out enemy bombers, but it was incredibly difficult to aim and use 10 round magazines which were used up quickly. Also, the plane had five 7.92mm Browning machine guns for defense. One each was positioned in the ventral, dorsal, and tail positions, and two could be used by waist gunners on the sides. The Dutch initially planned to equip 2,000 kilograms of bombs on the plane, but due to obsolete bomb racks, the quantity had to be cut in half, so only 1,000 kilograms of bombs were used instead. Like many other Dutch aircraft, the T-5 had a metal and fabric fuselage and wooden wings. By the 1930s, other air forces were transitioning away from wooden constructions due to the increased strength of metal but a wooden construction worked well with the Dutch industrial capacity. Generally, wooden wings provided extra maneuverability at the expense of structural strength. However, the wooden design also made the plane vulnerable to fires. Magnetizing the susceptibility was a lack of self-sealing fuel tanks. A combination of three factors, namely a partially wooden construction, fuel tanks that did not self-seal, an extra oil needed for the engines meant that the planes were incredibly vulnerable to catching fire if hit. Unfortunately for the Netherlands, the T-5's production was plagued by bureaucratic delays. Sixteen were ultimately produced, but one was lost before the war due to an accident. When Germany invaded the Netherlands, the Dutch Air Force used its 15 T-5s to bomb German forces as they marched into the country. They managed to destroy three German planes and tried to bomb roads and bridges to delay the German advance. The defensive posture of the Netherlands meant that the bombers could not be used effectively on the offensive against German cities. German aircraft were also quick to intercept them. T-5s tried to intercept many of the Ju-52 transport planes used by German paratroopers, and they were only partially successful. By May 17th, though, all T-5s had been destroyed by the Germans. The T-5 functioned decently as a medium bomber, but its slow speed, lack of self-sealing fuel tanks, unreliable engines, and weak construction materials meant that it was very vulnerable to attacks by German fighters. Due to German air superiority in May 1940, the T-5s had few opportunities to use their bombs against the Germans. The Fokker G1 was one of the most advanced Dutch warplanes of the conflict, and it was very comparable to the German Bf 110. It was a heavy fighter designed to take out enemy bombers or strike ground targets. Still, it was more maneuverable than the T5. It had quite a unique design, with two engines and two booms. The prototype first flew in March 1937, and it flew quite well, but trouble with the two Hispano Suiza engines meant that they needed to be replaced. 
These malfunctions delayed the introduction of the aircraft into the Air Force. Instead, the final design used Pratt & Whitney Wasp Jr. engines. Later, a variant was made that used two 830 horsepower Bristol Mercury engines. The maximum speed was an impressive 295 miles per hour with the new Mercury engines. Like other Dutch aircraft at the time, the G1 had a metal fuselage and wooden wings. Over time, interest in the plane's dive bombing capabilities increased. So, dive air brakes were installed to fit the plane for this role. The plane could manage speeds of 400 miles per hour in a dive with these new brakes. The plane could store 300 kilograms of bombs, or alternatively, have exterior fuel tanks installed for increased range. The exterior fuel tanks were planned to be used when escorting bombing formations, but they were never used in combat. The Fokker G1 provided formidable armament. At first, it was planned to use two 23mm cannons and two 7.9mm machine guns, but a design with more machine guns was favored. The final design included eight 7.9mm Browning machine guns. The cockpit also offered a great amount of visibility to the pilot. Behind the pilot sat the rear gunner, who was also the navigator and radio operator. Most of the time, only two crew members were used, but sometimes a third crew member acted as the bombardier. Not long after the development of the G1 began, Spain, Finland, Estonia, and Sweden ordered deliveries of the plane. However, the Netherlands placed a ban on arms exports due to the increasing chance of war in Europe, and they needed the planes for their own defense. Therefore, the planes were never delivered to any foreign country. However, Finland obtained a license to produce the G1, which they would later use against the Soviets. The plane first entered Dutch service in 1939. By the time Germany attacked in 1940, the Dutch had 23 G1s. Unfortunately for the Dutch, most of the planes were destroyed on the ground by German bombers. Still, those that did get in the air proved to be a formidable foe to the Germans, and they attacked ground troops and officially destroyed 14 German transport aircraft. Overwhelming German air superiority largely inhibited the G1 from performing its intended role as a ground support aircraft and bomber interceptor. Following the Dutch surrender, a G-1 managed to escape to Britain, where their wing design was studied by the British. In addition, Germany ordered that the Fokker factory continue production of a previous batch of aircraft that had been ordered before the German invasion. These new G-1s and the ones the Germans captured were used as training aircraft for pilots of the German Bf-110. The Fokker T9 was designed in 1938 to improve upon and replace the T5. On the surface, the design was very similar to the T5, for both had similar elements such as twin tail fins, dual engines, and retractable landing gear, but it had many new design features as well. It had an all-metal design, twice the bomb payload as the T5 due to improved bomb racks, in much better defensive armament that used 12.7mm heavy machine guns. With 2,750 total horsepower, the plane could reach speeds of 270 miles per hour. Only one prototype was ever built in 1939, and the project was scrapped when Germany invaded the country. The Fokker D-23 was arguably the most advanced Dutch fighter made before World War II. It had a very unique fighter design that included two engines, one in the front and one in the rear. The design was created to fix a problem affecting all propeller planes. On ordinary propeller planes, the spin of the propeller caused the plane to drift in the direction the propeller was spinning. On the Fokker D23, the rear engine was supposed to counterbalance the torque that was caused by the front propeller spinning in one direction. Whereas the front engine pulled, the rear engine pushed the plane. The engines had a combined power of 1,060 horsepower, moving the plane up to speeds of 326 miles per hour. A prototype was built in 1939 
and the final design was intended to be completely metal and have two 13.2mm machine guns and two 7.9mm machine guns. It was a promising design in 1939, but full tests could never be completed due to the German invasion a year later. The Dutch manufactured numerous high-quality aircraft in the 1930s, many of which proved capable of defeating enemy planes. Unfortunately for the Dutch, German air superiority meant that the Dutch bomber planes could not be used to their full potential. Still, Dutch planes inspired the designs of other aircraft and proved to be quite useful in the Finnish Air Force even up to 1944.